Welcome to everybody here. Let's remember that this is a conference in context, and this is part of a series of conferences that we've been giving. And we are talking specifically about vulnerable populations in the context of COVID-19. We remind you that we have simultaneous interpreting to English. If you would like to listen to English, you can click on that at the bottom of your screen. So once again, welcome, Nora. Let's ask Gonzalo Rojas if he can briefly introduce her, and then we'll jump in. Gonzalo, are you there? Yes, here I am, Franco. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to introduce Nora. It's truly a pleasure. How are you? Hello, Gonzalo. Hi, everyone. Well, I was thinking about the words that I could share in terms of introducing Nora. It's really important, first of all, to point out this. We, we need to talk about the waste pickers, and they're probably in the urban context, some of the most uh, powerful people, and they are looking just for a way to organize, a way to work with dignity, and they're just trying to find a way to work and integrate themselves in society and to better the planet. Waste pickers in urban contexts have really fought for recognition and they have showed society as a whole how we can all live together and achieve something better. They've also taught us how we can invest in this fight to improve quality of life within systemic changes. And this transition has been possible because of the leaders Some of these leaders have worked together to build each other up, to back each other up, and really look at a collective and sectorial process. There are some people who have truly been critical in this process and have made it all pro possible, and I'm convinced that Nora is one of those people. Uh, truly, all of the people who work in this issue in Avena and in other organizations as well, we're all certain of one thing. We could not have achieved what we've achieved, and we would not have been able to position the waste pickers as they are today if it had not been for the dedication, the openness, the generosity, the attitude of Nora. She's truly one of the main people, not only in Latin America, but around the world in the world of waste picking. So it's truly a pleasure to introduce you. Thank you for accepting our invitation to speak. And we're going to listen to you talk about how we can support waste pickers so that the most affected sectors can face this and mitigate the impact of the pandemic. And we want to learn about how we can build these people up so that we can fight through these challenges we're facing now. So thank you so much, Nora, for being here. Well, thank you so much for those lovely words. Hello. We hear you, Nora. Hello. Hello there. Hello there. We are hearing you. Well, Franco, are you going to start us or should I just jump in? Hello. Go ahead, Nora. All right, then. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. Really, thank you so much for taking some time out to talk about the people who are affected during this pandemic. I think it's a real noble idea. Everyone is really worried about the economy. Everyone's worried about what's going to happen with industry. You know, all of that, everything that's affected in a crisis like this and 
<laughs> no one could have ever imagined that we were going to live through something like this. And I think that I could start off with this. Waste pickers around the continent, little by little, we've understood something. Just like Gonzalo was talking about the, the adversity we face, we were born into physical poverty. And what I mean by that is just uh, lack of resources. Because you can be poor in terms of economic resources, but if you don't have certain public services like clean water, education, health care, waste management, then if you have access to those things, then you're not so disadvantaged. So we have really been a force for change. Maybe because we've also had some kind of leverage in terms of making change. For example, throughout the continent, the oldest organization of waste pickers is in Colombia. We started up in about, about 30 years ago and we started in policy with solid waste management. We started to work on inclusive recycling and waste pickers. So the what was the leverage that we had? We started to organize. It started out as an imperfect process, really, because we were trying to organize thousands of people. These people didn't really have a chance to go to school. Most of them just went to grade school. And just a few of these people went to middle school and had some kind of technical training apart from that. But most of all, we're talking about organizing thousands of people who really wanted to continue their education and continue organizing. Really, what we need is this. We need to put forth some plan to better our lives and our work lives in terms of waste picking. This is really a different kind of work. It's really a different kind of work compared to people who are selling things in the street or people who are doing domestic work. Our work has a very specific set of characteristics that makes us vulnerable. So in that way, we have really difficult conditions compared to work conditions in other sectors. So because of that, we've tried to make our organization a tool so that we could change public policy in terms of solid waste management. And keep in mind that waste picking has been professionalized for 80 years in Colombia. But we would like to really achieve better working and living conditions for waste pickers. So, for example, what am I talking about when I talk about work conditions? First of all, we need people to separate their recycling and continue to give it to waste pickers. But that depends on the government. So we've been doing this work for about 80 years now. So aside from improving a living wage, we also separate out waste that goes to industry and we've made some extra efforts to organize ourselves so that we can work with better conditions and we have to recognize that waste picking is an important part of the economy and it's an important public service. Now we've been working through this crisis and we're feeling quite energized exactly because of the power of the organization and our national government kept something in mind. They consider what we take as waste to be commodities and for governments and for industry. 
everything needs some kind of packaging, some kind of glass or plastic packaging, even when you think about things like supplies and medicine. And even when you think about essential items like toilet paper, that needs packaging too. So waste pickers in some, or in some governments receive help. So what have we done? We started to lay out a schema so that we could develop our own culture of protecting ourselves in this crisis. So we've worked with a lot of organizations to achieve this. And these organizations make a commitment to protecting waste pickers so that we can continue offering this service. And people now realize that waste pickers are going to continue picking up and separating waste. And we have to make sure that these people are protected and demonstrate to the community that they have to help take care of the people providing the service. There's been a lot of work put into this to make sure that our coworkers are taking all kinds of safety measures. In fact, several years ago, we developed some safety measures. Keep in mind that the medical system is quite run down in Colombia. And in many cases, you can only access the system if you can pay. So we are providing this service in a very difficult environment, but we have received a great reaction from the community and we're hoping that the government will offer some kind of help. We have already received some help that we want to recognize. For example, Colombia made the decision to make sure that people above 70 years of age would not be able to leave home. And there are some companies that have made contributions so that people above 70 years old could also have some kind of economic support. And that's been really valuable because they make up 30% of the waste pickers in our associations. Can you hear me? Yes, Nora, we're here. No, one of the questions that we had for you was this. We wanted to know if you could mention some of the main problems in terms of what waste pickers are facing uh, during the pandemic. Well, the main problems, let's see. First, the lack of personal protective equipment. I mean, we have a total lack of PPE. And so we didn't have any kind of good supplies in terms of personal protective equipment and also a lack of alcohol, things that you can wipe things down with. That has been really been difficult to get those things. Even economically, you know, we've had to buy a little bit of those things. But one of the main difficulties is the lack of that. Another difficulty is this. Not in the community, but among governments, trying to, you know, in the case of Bogota's government, trying to motivate ourselves to continue to provide the service, and then achieving some level of understanding and putting these things into decrees with the government so that we can continue doing our work. So the main problem, what is it? It's really the lack of resources and then it's the lack of understanding with authorities. And the community has really given us a positive response. It's been really nice. Like people, for example, are being more careful with separating their waste. And what's another difficulty we have among waste, mix, waste pickers? With the warehouses, for example, think about the chain 
of processing. The majority of the warehouses involved in this chain have been closed down. So we didn't know for a while if we were still going to be able to go out and separate waste and deliver it. And the police, we had trouble with them because they didn't have any information either. So we had some trouble with that and there was a bunch of waste lying around the street. We also had some trouble in that respect. And then in another respect, we also had some difficulties with businesses that were closed down. We have been able to continue to work with paper, plastic, and scrap metal. Perfect, Nora. Right now, what are the organizations that are supporting waste pickers and how are they doing it? Well, we have received support from some organizations. So far during the crisis, just having a pair of gloves is a huge deal. So we've received contributions from governmental entities, for example. We've had some donations for, for gloves. There's another organization we work with that we've worked with for a long time now, and they've made some contributions. They've contributed supplies and PPE like masks, disinfectants, and gloves. There's another organization that's been able to provide some support, and they've supported economic support for over 70 years now. That organization has been able to contribute with food banks, food supplies. And so we've also received uh, 12,000 hand soaps so that people who are working out in the street can wash their hands frequently. So we've really been receiving kind of strategic help, but the problem continues to be access to personal protective equipment. But we're seeing how we can resolve that little by little. Perfect. We're seeing some questions coming up in the chat. Some people have raised their hands. We'll keep talking to Nora. What they want to know is if you all had been closed down during the quarantine or confinement, or if you're up and running 100% now. Well, we made our own decision in that respect. Bogota started kind of a simulation of quarantine that we did the first couple of days. That was a long weekend. In some areas of the country and the city, that's what they did. And most people just stay at home on Sundays anyhow. So we decided to take those four days at the beginning of the quarantine. And we started to work with the Bogota government and the government on a national level. And that's been really useful. We've been able to work with the Alliance of Waste Pickers. And this has been a really useful source of dialogue. And so we've worked with the national government so that the management of the crisis would help keep industries open and businesses open in terms of food chains and medicine change and, and public services. So for now, let's say in the first phase of quarantine, not everything was totally clear in terms of management services. So we had to let the government and industry know that management services, which is what we do as part of, of waste picking, makes up part of solid waste management. And so we had to let them know that we needed to continue providing that service. And people didn't really understand that at first. But in the first phase of quarantine, it was clear because the national government was still providing solid waste management. And so we found the magic word to make everything keep moving forward. 
So all of the warehouses continue to be open. And really, the demand for materials like paper, metal, scrap metal, plastic and glass is huge. And that's what we need to face the national crisis. The national government has also realized that we are an important part of that chain. So trash continues to be thrown out. And in some munis municipalities in the country, people continue to collect and separate waste, and that's working well. And we are commercializing quite quickly. We can't even keep an inventory because we're getting the waste, getting the inventory, and it's going right out the door. So we are up and running 100%. And we're working 15, 16 hours every day. Great, Nora. Thank you. We've got several questions here. Soledad Mesa, you raised your hand a little while ago. Just make sure that your question is brief, please. Hello. I'm a national director of Waste Pickers in Chile. And it's a pleasure to hear you, as always. There's something that worries us as waste pickers in Chile, and really on an international level. We see the reality in Brazil, Argentina, and Colombia. And for us, the pandemic has hit us really hard in every way, not only in separating the waste, but also in managing it. Right now we have a really critical situation in terms of our position with international governments. In some countries, the government has reacted quite quickly and they understand that this is not just a health crisis, it's an economic crisis. And so those governments have really reached out to the most needy. Waste pickers make up a big part of the informal economy, just trying to earn a living. And this is a reality on an international level. We're also worried about something else. We're thinking about people in countries where the quarantine has truly been devastating, like Paraguay, Panama, Guatemala. In those countries, they have a very complicated situation. And here in Chile, we have been able to achieve some things for waste pickers, but this is also, also a very critical situation for this area. The most of the waste pickers in Chile are centralized in Santiago. They're not really spread out among the different regions. So we're launching a campaign for the National Association of Waste Pickers. And we're looking to help out other co-workers who work with environmental issues. However, having said that, we've really been let down by government help here in Chile. Some weeks ago, they made an announcement in terms of a possibility of hiring some waste pickers for paid work. It would have been a very limited form of help. I think that it's really important to understand what's happening and what's happening in the reality of Colombia. And it's quite different compared to other countries. We don't have the warehouses that you all have up and running during the quarantine. We're really just trying to manage and sell the waste. We're trying to keep security systems up and running in Chile, but unfortunately, we have a neoliberal system, and this just makes everything worse for small businesses and for informal workers in the informal economy. So it's a really tough situ situation and very critical. So here's my question. How can we ch achieve, really on an international level, in countries like Chile and other countries that are well-known, in this fight, how can we really rise up on an international level, unify, 
and make people understand the needs of waste pickers because this is a really critical situation and it's quite complicated for many of us. We don't have the visibility and the support that others have from their government in, in government in places like Colombia. So we have achieved a higher level of visibility for waste pickers in terms of the circular economy and the supply chain. So we also have some kind of opportunity to leverage demands on an international level. There is truly a debt owed to waste pickers on an international level. And I think that nowadays we can really put some weight behind that and leverage that because this pandemic is evidence of that. The people who are paying the price of this crisis, it's really just tremendous. Thank you so much, Soledad. And let's ask Nora for her reflections on that. Uh, let's see, Nora, let, let us see your face. There we go. So two thoughts here. One, I think that we've done a lot of outreach in terms of changing priorities. We're really on a new stage in terms of that. So we had a huge inventory because our idea was to work with plastic and wood. So we were looking at working with material to build 200 houses. <laughs> Obviously now that's not gonna be possible. Second, the priorities that people are looking at has to do with the food chain. The priority, priority right now has to do with making more a more dynamic system in terms of the materials and the inventory and of course we want to make sure that we're respecting the quarantine and what are we doing there we're looking at strategic ways to work so that we're not putting a waste picker's health at work for example if a waste picker falls ill right now and we've fought so hard to say, you know, you know, we have to continue providing our service and we have to be available to work. That would be really enough for anyone to say, well, I mean, all people are at risk. It's not just us, but we have to keep doing our jobs in the most careful way possible. So we understand that right now in this pandemic, we're in an economic and social crisis. And things that we didn't think about before are really in our, fair, in our face. And we're kind of in a third world war right now. And so because of that, we see these challenges. So right now, we have to be able to really overcome such a devastating situation. We have to look for the best in ourselves, look for the best in our organizations. We have to be thinking 24 seven about how we can protect people, how we can develop schemas. And we have to make sure that we're not going to become a problem ourselves Rather, we need to make sure that we are part of the solution for society and for families. And really, the economic crisis is hitting a lot harder than it had before. So before, there were difficulties in terms of keeping warehouses open. And now it's like it's almost impossible. So we all know that the economic paralysis of just one week in any country is going to lead to one year of bouncing back. And that involves really stabilizing new economies, stabilizing 
societies, healthcare systems, nothing is going to be the same after this is over. So we're really, really trying to make some clear priorities, but we had made those priorities and they've changed now. So priorities in terms of working with industry, separating waste, working with commodities. And we have to make sure that we make, that we're a part of an international schema so that we can have something to contribute. So our inventories for building houses are just going to kind of sit there until we've defined new priorities for those raw materials. I mean, we're also not saying that people shouldn't go out and separate waste and take them to warehouses. Where are we really focusing? Really, we're looking at what industry needs and we're trying to make our best efforts to meet those needs. But I think that I could say to all of my coworkers, we have to make an effort so that this works. Some years ago, we started a reflective process in our organization. And in full resource resources, that's the best we can do, really. Right now, we just have to make sure that the organization is up and running. It might be imperfect, but we are going to do our best. Thank you, Nora. I understand that you've kind of answered that question, but Carlos Garcia is asking, what kind of actions do you have planned for the post-crisis time? And what are the main players in the, those actions? Well. We know that we can't keep doing the same thing in terms of waste management. We have to think about a better economy. We have to think about improving our work and life conditions. And aside from that, we have to think about financial growth in the value change. We have to think about management services and valuing those management services in terms of waste picking. In Bogota, we've established a plastic wood line. There are many companies manufacturing plastic wood in Bogota. And we understand now that this is something that's very needed. There are people who are waste pickers who live in very precarious situations that actually make their health situation even trickier. So in terms of the service, in terms of selling the, the materials, right now supply chains are focusing there and our hope is that we can pick back up that process Because in our countries, what we really need is to strengthen management services. Because we're going to start to have some level of trouble with landfills. And so that's really going to be our new plan in terms of priorities and overcoming the crisis. I mean, historically, we're used to being in crisis. Great. Thank you, Nora. Andrea Cabrera, go ahead and ask your question. Please be brief. Good morning, Nora. I am Andrea Cabrera from GreenClick Software, and I have a question. My question has to do with some of the um, dips in price that you've seen in some of your materials. Some has really plummeted, such as with cardboard. And really, that's been because a lot of the material that before the waste pickers would buy is now being imported. So 
This crisis has to do with the importation, but how has this had a negative or a positive impact in waste picking society in organizations? I understand that a better supply of imported material with a better price is bought by you, and that's lower. But now I know that the whole international market has been paralyzed. So what kind of positive aspect has that had? Does that shed any light on what the future brings in terms of management services in Colombia? Can this better the service that you've been offering? Well, we have to clarify some things first. First, the way that the markets and the prices behave The price has never recognized the efforts of waste pickers. So let's think about worldwide. When the price of cardboard dipped, this is really, really complicated, actually. It's tough to talk about the world market. But I'll tell you this, in Colombia, the price of material has never really gone up. Here's the thing. Glass has been the same price for 10 years. Everything else has gone up. Gas, waste management prices have gone up, but glass has never gone up. And then the value of scrap and other materials is cycle cyclical. So for example, between October and December, the price of cardboard goes up a bit. And so say it's 10 pesos more, that's enough to compensate for the five that it lowers. So this is how it's been historically in terms of the prices of the market. And so in Latin America, we've looked at these issues. And so we're looking for a better price in terms of management services, collecting and separating these commodities or raw materials from waste pickers. And in the case of Colombia, this is how it is. But even so, in Colombia, we are paid for collecting waste and we are treated the same as other businesses that do the same work. But this is not enough because the scale of recyclable materials. And so this is something that we have to look over. And here's a third thing. Resources, for example, it, material resources and services are two economic elements that provide income. For example, the waste pickers in Colombia are in the same situation. We make just 40% of a base salary. It's not a minimum salary. And that's what we've done in Colombia. So the price is never going to cover our work. It's just going to cover the material. So right now what's happening? Cardboard has gone up 20 pesos. And then there are other materials that are in more demand that have gone up by up to 30 pesos. And so that's the example I have in terms of how the market acts in this situation. But for right now, we think that in terms of the market, things are going well because it's better to have something than nothing. We think that right now we're giving our all. So for example, if we're looking to get paid, 
we're going to be able to look to get paid the most that we can in the market. And people have to do their very best work in terms of separating and turning in the materials into warehouses. Thank you, Nora. I don't know if you can yet yeah, move the camera so we can see your face. Well, we're here from Fundacion Avina, but there are lots of companies here, organizations here that are interested in your work. They're interested in knowing what is the added value that you expect from our organizations. Well, I think that in terms of Avina, the waste pickers organizations, in terms of governments, in terms of industry and business, well, we're going to have to rethink our relationships. We're going to have to rethink the support mechanisms. And that's in terms of Avina, but not just Avina. We have to think about what does what do these support mechanisms look like? But what you were saying a little while ago, this crisis has really changed our priorities. We have to think about what we can do in terms of an organizational level, but also in governments. We have to think about what we can do in terms of resources in the right moment. And we have to think about people prioritizing these resources. For example, one entity might think of the price for a load, but not everyone is thinking that. So we need to open up dialogue. And it's really important to be flexible in terms of ideas. For example, we're almost always asked for help with in terms of financing. And so right now, I think we need to really have an open mind. At the same time, you know, we're not going to think, oh, no, we're going to lose all these resources. No problem. No, no, that's not it. We have to really have an open mind in terms of what is it that people need? What kind of help people do need? What should we prioritize? And how can we make sure that we can ensure that kind of help? The majority, if not all, of leaders are really thinking about how we can help our coworkers. We're thinking about how we can do it in the best way possible. And we've been looking for help all over because, as I was saying before, we, we need certain elements. And there are some aspects in which there are materials lacking. So, for example, you need to put gas in your car, but we have a lack of resources for that gas. So I think that we really have to focus on where the help needs to go and what we need to strengthen right now so that, well, in the case of Colombia, I think that right now we're working around the continent. And I think that our biggest ask of the national government has been to be recognized as part of waste management services. And I think that little by little, with all of the help that we're asking for, we're going to be able to have a better service. But we need to be recognized. That's the biggest ask that we have for IRR, for Avena. We really need help 
in terms of getting governments to recognize waste pickers as part of municipal waste ma management and getting us paid as part of the formal economy. And I'm talking about just basic profits, starting with waste pickers. That's what we're asking from all of these entities. The possibility of giving us support in different parts of the continent. And we need that support to be focused on organizations that are really on a list of priorities. Jose Valverde asks us, have you worked with other organizations in Latin America to exchange ideas? We have been very fortunate in that way. We've been working with organizations in Brazil and in Chile. And I'd like to send my condolences for Ezequiel, who's disappeared. He was doing a great job. So we've been up and running in communication and touch 24 seven with them. We've had some national conversations that have been very productive 24 seven. I think that we're really fortunate in that respect. We have this organizational process since 2008. And we've been able to work with other waste picking organizations throughout Latin America, from IRR to the Inter-American Bank to Avena. I think that that has created the possibility that now we move forward in all countries. Great, thank you, Nora. Are there any other questions? Let's go ahead and wrap up this webinar. If you wanted to ask a question, you could put it in the chat or raise your hand. Great, anyone else? We don't have any more questions for now, Nora. I don't know, Daniel? Well, if, uh, if there aren't any questions, I'd like to say some more about what we're doing in the continent in terms of making sure we keep up and running. We are staying alive as a Waste Pickers Union and we're looking at how to continue to buy PPE, buy gas, and we're looking at the possibility of continuing to back up those fights. And really the end idea and the whole purpose of these organizations for waste pickers is to improve our quality of life and work conditions. Another question, could you share what specifically the decree says? Because in all countries where we have waste pickers, we need that kind of official decree. Specifically, it says that waste management and solid waste management services and recycling services are an official part of public services. I think that we already answered this other question. You want to add anything else? Go ahead. Uh, no, I'm talking to Carlos. Carlos, go ahead and unmute yourself. We're listening. Great. Hey, Nora. If you could share the file, because here in Paraguay, uh, we're allowed to collect, separate, and transport waste. But even so, some of the waste pickers are obviously scared because they can get stopped in these situations. And we know that the communicative ability of some waste pickers can be low because we have you know, a low self-esteem, being a waste picker, and so they feel scared. And so they're not going out anymore. 
And this has really created a financial problem for them. So if you could maybe share with us that document of the decree, and that way we can try and add that. And we can try and add waste picking to the official solid waste management. And that would make the waste pickers here feel better because obviously they're concerned about their health and they're worried that they'll have trouble in terms of traveling around. That's right. I think that we can add that to the to-do list. I think that if this talk has any takeaways, we can share them in documents and I'd be happy to do that. Not only the decrees that have been issued in Colombia, but also we've got this contingency plan as well. We've adopted this contingency plan for our professionals. And we have to remem remember that everything that we're doing is for the good of the waste pickers. Sometimes they're just making two or three dollars a day. And so, of course, as an organization, we want that to improve during and after the crisis. Excellent, Nora. If you can send me those documents, I can send them to all of the attendees. We have one more question before wrapping up. Can you talk a little bit more in details about the actions to mitigate the risks in terms of handling the waste? Yes, we have a contingency plan. First, we're working with people in warehouses and people working out on the streets, and we're showing them how they can use personal protective equipment. We're talking to them about how to constantly wash their hands. People who are working out in the street get water and soap so they can constantly wash their hands. Three to four times a day, we have some stops to wipe things down, clean things up in warehouses. So we've really been putting a lot of work into that. We also encourage them to wash their hands, to use face masks, gloves, and then also to use disinfectants. Great. Thank you so much, Nora. Can you talk a little bit about, about the attitude in terms of management in Colombia and what are the new platforms in terms of waste management and recycling? Well, we don't work with new platforms. Andres asks, how does uh, waste management work with respect to these platforms? But I don't know what platforms you're talking about. Andres, if you could really specify what you're talking about with the platforms. Right now, we've had some trouble because organizations were making posters with the decree. And so the waste pickers have IDs. And we've been able to turn in some accreditation elements. And this sets the standard in terms of what to do if the police stop us. We've been giving recommendations to the workers as well. We've been giving them recommendations specifically because there's been some conflict with the police. Waste pickers carry around their IDs, we wear uniforms, and we've been doing some other work. We have numbers on our uniforms. And the secretary of the network that's been working right now has been sending out a bunch of recommendations by internet, by mail, through voicemails. And so we know how to be safe when we're re-entering our homes. 
And that's been a huge undertaking that's really helped us a lot. It's helped raise awareness. And we know that we have to assume responsibility with our safety and among our families. Thank you, Nora. And Andres was asking about how you're using technology like HAP and digitalization of waste management. No, we don't have a personalized waste management service. Like for example, for someone who calls and says, hey, we have five kilos of material. No, we have our routes. And then in terms of using technology, we use it so that we can direct people for and let them know when the waste pickers are going to be out in the street. We don't have a personalized service in terms of pickup. We don't use applications so that people can say, hey, I've got some recycling in my house. No, we use these technologies to help people understand how they can separate their waste. And then we let them know when the waste pickers are going to be along their route. We've asked people to give face masks to waste pickers if they have them. We've been really spreading a lot of information through other technologies such as Facebook, WhatsApp groups, and we've really tried to get infographics out so that people can have more information about safety measures. We've also been able to get the word out about what governments are doing or what healthcare institutions are doing. So for example, we can tell people, hey, if you're having this problem, you should go to this place. So we've been using technology to really help people understand about coronavirus, what its impact is, how they need to combat it. And so we've been really spreading information to our fellow workers and overall letting them know that they need to just remain calm and continue working. And so that's the way that we've been using all of the information technology. And of course, we've been able to use it to build up our active community, people who are still working in waste picking. And that helps not just the waste pickers, but also the entire city. Great, thank you so much, Nora. We're going to wrap up this webinar and we're going to remind you that we have a recording on solid waste management. You can find that on Avina's website. Nora, thank you so very much for being with us today. If you'd like to give some final thoughts before we wrap up, I will be in touch with everyone else and then we'll send out all the questions. Great. My final reflection would be, you know, about how this crisis is making us rethink everything as people. We have to think about how we're building up our own well-being and how we're protecting it in this time. We have to think about how we're protecting ourselves. But we also have to think about our collective well-being. And in terms of waste picking organization, we want you to know that we're doing, making a huge effort and you understand our focuses and our work. And all of the waste pickers are working to protect themselves, protect their families and the whole community. And we have to make a collective effort We have to think of this as the right moment to make efforts on an organizational level. There are so many governments, so many societies facing this crisis that have to come together and will be able to overcome this crisis more easily together. So I ask to my fellow workers and all of the people to join together. Thank you so much, Nora, for this talk. Thank you for every to everyone for being here next week. We're going to have a new talk and we'll talk about climate change. And we hope that you'll be able to make it. Thank you so much. We'll wrap up the talk now.
Greetings and blessings to everyone.